I'm sure you've heard the word non-Euclidean tossed around somewhere, and if you haven't, I hope these visuals are self-explanatory. Yeah, it's weird. See, we spend the majority of time on relatively flat space where geometry is defined by self-evident rules. But space isn't always flat, rather, it's bent, sometimes to a point where those fundamental rules no longer apply. If so, then that space is no longer Euclidean. It's non-Euclidean. And these spaces have some of the strangest properties geometry has to offer. So grab your thinking caps, don't mind the reality warping around you, and let's dive into some strange shapes. Non-Euclidean geometry, at its core, is geometry that does not follow Euclidean postulates. More specifically, it gets rid of the parallel postulate and brings forth the two forms of non-Euclidean geometry, hyperbolic and spherical. First, let's explore spherical geometry, the space of positive curvature. In spherical geometry, space is positively curved, which basically means it's curving into each point. The only Euclidean shape with constant positive curvature all around is the sphere, hence the name. The first thing to realize is in this new world, you can loop back to a starting position by turning 90 degrees, creating a sort of triangle with three 90 degree angles, something usually impossible to do. Right, but what even is a triangle? Are lines still lines in spherical space? After all, they're more like arcs. Well, we generalize the notion of a line to a geodesic, basically the closest path between two points. In a sphere, a geodesic would be its great circle, or the largest circular cross-section. So yeah, this is a triangle by spherical definitions. What's also interesting is you can get larger and smaller angle sums depending on how big the triangle is. Remember how we broke the parallel postulate? Well now, every great circle intersects at two diametrically opposite points, meaning spherical equivalents to lines always intersect, and as such, parallel lines cease to exist. Another cool thing is that moving too far away from an object results in you meeting that object again, due to the unbounded yet finite nature of a sphere. Cool, but could we project the space back into Euclidean? What would that look like? Well, projections are kind of like shadows. There isn't a single shadow that must be cast. We have full control over it. Thus, the projection you end up with is entirely dependent on how you choose to project it. Two of the most popular ways to project a sphere are stereographic and gnomic. If we choose one point and project each point to another located on the intersection of that line with a plane, we achieve a stereographic projection onto an infinite plane. If we choose a point on the center instead, we can map a hemisphere and achieve a gnomic projection, still to an infinite plane. Notice how in the gnomic projection, all great circles remain lines, but angles are distorted. For our visualization, let's use stereographic projection and see what it would be like to live in real 2D spherical space. One of the nice properties of stereographic projection is that unlike gnomic, it preserves angles. We call this conformal. Objects appear huge if they're further away. What's interesting is we are treating the ground as an equator here, but in reality, you would always have a point of view above the ground. This means that from the perspective of a person, the ground below you would appear to engulf the entire surrounding. On the other side of this non-Euclidean coin is hyperbolic geometry. While a sphere has positive curvature moving in the same direction, hyperbolic space has every point in negative curvature moving away in both directions like a saddle. It should be noted we have rigorous ways to define curvature, but this simple explanation is enough to get the gist. A problem we run into when projecting hyperbolic geometry is Hilbert's theorem. 
we cannot isometrically embed a complete surface with constant negative curvature into 3D Euclidean space without distortions or singularities. The best visualizations without projection are geometries with singularities or non-constant curvature like the pseudosphere or the hyperbolic paraboloid. Similar to spherical geometry, the only axiomatic difference to Euclidean space is the parallel postulate. Given a point not on a line, infinitely many lines exist that do not intersect the given line. This results in two interesting triangle properties. The sum of angles is always less than 180 degrees and the area of a triangle is directly proportional to the angle defect. Interestingly, and I guess reasonably by definition, hyperbolic space acts in a lot of ways opposite to spherical. But I'm sure after visualizing spherical geometry, you're wondering how we could walk around in hyperbolic. Introducing the Poincare disk, a hyperbolic equivalent of stereographic projection. This is a bit more confusing. As stated previously, we can't use Euclidean space directly, so we need to take a detour through Minkowski space to avoid Hilbert's theorem. Whoa, 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 what is Minkowski space, you ask? We won't touch on the ins and outs of it, but the key idea is that distance or intervals are defined using a Minkowski metric. This metric, unlike Euclidean, defines the difference in space-time by subtracting instead of adding one of the dimensions. This dimension is often used to represent time and space, and as such, is usually called the time-like direction. The short explanation is that this new metric allows this, a two-sheeted hyperboloid formed by revolving a hyperbola, to possess constant negative curvature. Keep in mind that this is very simplified. In this altered geometry, the geodesic between two points is given by the intersection of a plane with the hyperboloid passing through the origin and those two points, rather than the closest Euclidean path. To project this hyperboloid, simply take a line from each point to the top of its bottom sheet. The intersection of this line with the xy plane creates a disk, effectively confining the infinite hyperboloid into a unit disk. Because the timelike direction was flattened out, this projection can be perfectly represented in plain old Euclidean space. This model, known as the famous Poincare disk, preserves angles after projection kind of like a hyperbolic analogy to stereographic projection on spheres. Now that we got that out of the way, let's see what it would be like to walk around in hyperbolic space. Evidently, objects further away appear significantly smaller. As a consequence of breaking the parallel postulate, straight trees diverge and all angles kind of pinch together. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two geometries. Anyways, that's all for this simple explanation of non-Euclidean geometry. If anything is taken from this video, it's that geometry can bloom in ways never before seen. It's a lens to see new worlds, and maybe one day, we'll learn to truly appreciate it.